Now we'll understand types of sets. Simple, what are the ways, what are the nomenclature associated with sets? So, we have something called universal set. So, suppose there are three or four sets, say A, B and C. A universal set is a set which contains all the elements of all the three sets. A simple parallel is, suppose uh, the set of students in a school is the universal set. The set of students in standard 8, set of students in standard 9, set of students in standard 10. All these are contained in the big set that is a set of school of stu students of the school. So the set of students of the school is called the universal set. Okay. Just as you have set of rational numbers, suppose you have then the set of integers, set of natural numbers, set of whole numbers, all these are subsets of the set of rational numbers. So, set of rational numbers is the universal set. So, for example, here you have 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6. So, you will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Remember, there is also one thing to point. It can even have elements other than what we have in A and B. You can even be, say, comma 7, 8 also can be included. Even that can be included, but even 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That means if given a set A, B, C, etc., another set which contains all the elements of A, B, and C is called the universal set, the big set. And these are all parts of the big set. Then you have the concept of subset. Now, if A has all the elements of B, then B is a subset of A. For example, A is A, E, I, O, U, B is called O and U, so B contains, A contains all the elements of B, then B is a subset of A. Remember, even A is a subset of A. Every element is a subset of A. So, A contains all the elements of A, nothing more is told. If A has all the elements of B, then B is a subset of A. So, every element, every set is a subset of itself and suppose two sets are equal, that means they have the same elements and both of them are subsets of each other. So, we write it by this symbol B is a subset of A. So, the set itself is also a subset of itself. Every set is a subset of itself. Similarly, when two sets are equal, they are subsets of each other. And we have a proper subset. That is a proper subset means if B is a subset of A but B and A are not equal. Which means that A has at least one element more than what is in B. Then we say B is a proper subset. Say for example, uh, P is 1, 2, 3, 4 and Q is 1, 2 and 3. Then we say Q is a proper subset of P, which means P contains all the elements in Q plus at least one more element. So, Q is a subset, but there is a special type of subset, which is a proper subset. It is a proper part of P. And in that case, this is called the superset. So, which means that if set B is a proper subset of set a, then we say that set A is the superset and B is the proper subset. So, here also is the same. B is a proper subset of A. Why? Because A has all the elements of B and at least one more element, one or two or three more elements. Then we call it as a proper subset. Okay. Then we have singleton set set which has only one element. Say for example, I want to set, write the set of even prime numbers. So, there is only one even prime number. So, we call it as a singleton set. Then we have equal sets. Two sets are said to be equal if every element in the first set is present in set, uh, second set and every element in second set is also present in first set. So, that means they have identical elements. Yes, then we, they might be represented in different ways. So, for example, A could be written as set of all natural numbers between 1 and 6. So, it's going to be 2, 3, 4, 5. And this, another set B is the set of all small Bs such that 
<coughs> does that say b belongs to the set of integers okay and b is between 1 and 6 so even this is going to be 2 3 4 and 5 so these sets are said to be equal there is also the concept of equivalent sets meaning two sets which are not equal but they have the same number of elements say for example a is 1 2 3 4 and b is a e i o i o in the o so this has n of a is 4 n of b is also 4 so the cardinal number associated with both these sets is same so two sets which have the same number of elements are called equivalent sets so it's quite simple to understand whenever two sets are equal they are equivalent also but when two sets are equivalent they need not be equal and we also have disjoint sets, two sets which have no element in common. Say for example, A is 1, 3, 5, B is 6, 7, 8. So A intersection B is what is called as a null set, which is also represented as phi. Null set or phi is represented by an empty brace bracket. Also, even if 0 is present in this, it's not a null set. It's not a null set because 0 is an element. So, in a set which has no set element in it is called a null set. Say, for example, for example, you have set of even prime numbers greater than 2. The only even prime number is 2. And we are considering those even prime numbers which are greater than 2. In that case, A is going to be a null set. We write it this way or we write it this. But definitely not like this. This is totally wrong. You don't write brace bracket and put a phi inside. So either you write phi or just an empty brace bracket. It means empty set. So an empty set is one which does not have any element, which means there is no element which may satisfy the given condition, which has been mentioned in the set builder form. So these are disjoint sets. Then you have null set, a set which has no element. As I told example here, for example, I take a set A, x such that x is an integer and it's between minus 3 and minus 2. It's greater than minus 3 but less than minus 2. Now there is no such, there are numbers which are greater than minus 3 and minus 2 but they are rational numbers, they are not integers. So a is a null set or we write it as phi which is also a null set. So note A is equal to phi within brace bracket is not a null set. Instead it is a set which has phi as its element. So this is not a null set as I also mentioned earlier. So we did null set, disjoint sets, equal sets, equivalent set, finite set, infinite set, all these are the various types of singleton sets, various types of sets. And of course I did mention about equal versus equivalent sets. So, two sets which have same elements are equal sets and two sets which have same number of elements are said to be equivalent sets. For example, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1 are equal and equivalent. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7 are not equal but they are equivalent. Again, I reiterate, whenever two sets are equal, they have to be equivalent. But when two sets are equivalent, they need not be equal. Okay. And of course, we have a few symbols which have already been mentioned. A is IAU, which means small a belongs to the set A. So, A belongs to or is an element of set A. D does not belong to A because D is not featuring in this. Then you say P is A comma U and suppose A is A U B. Then we say P is a subset of A which means P contains, A contains all the elements present in B and maybe more or not maybe more but it's a subset. Then phi or empty brace bracket means of course null set. Thus we have these symbols involved. Okay.
Okay. Now let's take the small quiz. The null set is represented by what among these? Is it represented by this? Definitely not. This is not a null set. It's a set which has phi in it. This is also null set because it is a set which has zero in it. This is a null set. If it had been given even this, even that would have been a null set. So among these, phi is phi is the right answer. Yes, we do have it right. Okay. Now let's take this. I is a set of isosceles triangles and E is a set of equilateral triangles. Then what is equal to what? E is a set of isosceles triangles and E is a set of equilateral triangles. So if you look at an equilateral triangle, this is an equilateral triangle. And an isosceles triangle is like this. Which means that every equilateral triangle is an isosceles triangle, but every isosceles triangle is not an equilateral triangle. That means every element, this is supposed set A, every equilateral triangle is so, suppose A contains triangle 1, triangle 2, triangle 3, triangle 4, all these are equilateral. B may contain 1, 2, 3, which are isosceles, but also 5. So, 1, 2, 3, isosceles triangle, all these. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 6. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4 are equilateral triangles. So, they are also isosceles triangles. But there are also triangles like these, which are isosceles, but not equilateral. So, every element of set A is this. So, this is a set of... So, this is a set of equilateral triangle and this is a set of isosceles triangle. That means if B contains all the elements of E, uh, of I contains all the elements of A. That means E is a subset of I. Not I is not. E and I are equal totally out of question because there are many isosceles triangles which are not equilateral but every equilateral triangle is an isosceles triangle. So E is a subset of I is the right answer. Okay and similarly R is a set of isosceles right triangles and I is a set of isosceles triangles. So again here R contains all types of isosceles right triangles. So this is, these are the various types of isosceles right triangles that are present in R. Now, I contains all these that are present in R along with other types. That means every element of R is present in I or I contains all the elements of R and the others also. So in this case, R is a subset of I. That is its part of it. So R is a subset of I and here E is a subset of I. Let's see. Yes, we do have it that way. So just this is logically you have to analyze. Every equilateral triangle is isosceles triangle. So set of equilateral triangle is a part of the set of isosceles triangle. Similarly, every isosceles right triangle is an isosceles triangle but not vice versa. So R is a part of I. So it's actually... A proper subset of I e is also a proper subset of I. Okay.